generation upon generation there's no image. What'd you say? Perish. The generation would eventually perish, right? Eventually will cease to exist. Now what I want y'all to understand is that's your enemy's objective. That's the answer to your question. Why is it that we go into the Christian church and there is no black man because if the black man doesn't have an image after a certain number of generations, what's he going to do? He's going to perish. He's going to cease to exist. He's going to cease to exist. The, every, all these nations out here know. All these, you know all these, uh, you know what these white women think about you? Uh -huh. The Arab women, you know what they think about you? The uh, the Chinese women, you know what they think about you? They're intimidated because we're very powerful. Black women are very powerful. You're very powerful because you're what? You're <coughs> better than them. You're better than them. You know what they think about you when they see you with your with your afro and your beard out? You know what they think? What they think? I'm a criminal or something. Nah, nah, nah. That that's what they accuse you of being. Yes. Not that you're really a criminal, but you're what? Intelligent. You're intelligent. Oh, yeah, by us because we are Stereotypes, strong man. We, we because, are you're stronger, because you're stronger because you're more intelligent because you're smarter yes. because you're more beautiful so if they want to continue ruling this earth what did they have to take from you they have to take the image they have to take the image right right now let me show you that in your book written by your ancestors because so many of our people think that the bible is a white man's book no, the Bible's not a white man's book. Christianity is a white man's religion. Christianity is a white man's religion. I'm going to say it again. Christianity is a white man's religion. So let me show you what the Bible says that the white people did with the book. Give me 1 Maccabees. 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. 1 Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48. You know who was ruling during the time of the Romans? What did the people look like? What did the Romans look like? No, no, Romans weren't dark skinned people. The Romans were white people. The Romans were white people. All of the different Caesars, we weren't the Caesars. Who were the Caesars? Black. The white people. Caesars was white. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. With they, with they, with they, with they clothes on their head. And the togas that they wore, they were right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so who was ruling during the time of Christ? The Romans. The Romans. So why is it that we have a Roman image? Because the Romans want to set themselves up to be God in your mind. The so-called white people that ruled during that time, the, the, the attire that we wore, they, they don't show that to you on the image of Christ. Christ didn't wear no damn toga. Christ won't walk around looking like a Roman. He won't look like a Greek. But let me show you how you got images of, of Christ looking like a so-called white man. Check this out. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Read. And laid open the book of the law. So what the heathens did, they took the book of the law, which is this Bible right here. Our records. They laid it open, and what they do? We're in. The heathen. The heathen. The heathens are everybody that's not on this sign. Right. You see yourself on this sign, right? We talked about that. So-called African-American, you're of the tribe of Judah. An Israelite of the tribe of Judah. You a so-called black man? You a so-called black man? Y'all are Israelites of the tribe of Judah. Right. So everybody not on this sign is a heathen. Right. You're not a heathen. They lied to you and told you that you was the heathen. The Christian church told you that you was the Gentile. No, you the Jew. You the Jew. You started acting like Gentiles when you came over here on slave ships, right? Got oppressed by the white man. The white man gave you his religion. He gave you his doctrine. He gave you his dress code. He gave you his diet. That's how you became a Gentile in your mind. You became a Gentile in your mind. Now, fast forward to 2022, the real Jews, the real Israelites, if we ask them their nationality, they're going to tell me a color and a crayon box. The white man has reduced the so-called black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, native man, native woman to a color in a crayon box. We have been destroyed. We have been destroyed. They don't need shackles on our arms no more. My brother, they don't need shackles on our legs no more. They don't need to bind our bodies anymore. You know why? Because our minds are in, in a captive state. Our minds have been destroyed. And that destruction of our minds, huh? It's been manipulated. But the word of God has not been manipulated. The understanding of the word of God has been manipulated. The word of God is still pure. When it was translated, all the words that it said when it was translated are the exact same. But what's happened is a new doctrine has been pushed to manipulate the understanding of God's word. But let me show you how it started. I got your attention? Read. 
and laid open the book of the law. They laid the Bible open. Wherein the heathen, the so-called white man, the so-called uh, Chinese man, the Japanese man, the Arab man, the East Indian man, they laid it open, read, had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Did y'all catch that? The heathen laid our book open and sought to paint the likeness of whose image? No, of their image. That's how this image came about right here. They painted the likeness of their image so that they could destroy you. Because they knew, the so-called white man knew, if he could show you that the greatest man that ever walked this earth looked like them, you know what you would celebrate? July 4th. That's somebody. You'll be cooking out on July 4th. Oh, That's exactly what would happen. If he showed you that the same person that put you in slavery is your savior, guess what you would do? Everything that your savior has done. Everything that he he's has established. He told you to go to church on Sunday. Black people line up in droves to go to church on Sunday. But there's no black person out here that can show me one scripture in the Bible that says go to church on Sunday. I challenge anybody out here. Find the scripture that says go to church on Sunday and we'll read it loud, we'll put the Bibles down and we'll all be in church on Sunday. I'll be in the front row. Matter of fact, I might come to the podium. I'll preach for you. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. But I can guarantee you it ain't in there. Read it again. Read it again. And lay it open, the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. They painted the likeness of their image because they knew if they destroyed our image, they destroy our what? Mind. Our mind. Our mind. Now give me Psalms 80, 83. Give me Psalms chapter 83. Because I'm going to show you in your book that that's the whole objective of all these nations is to destroy you. To destroy you. They know if they can get the black man in church on Sunday that he's going to celebrate July 4th and God hates it. He's going to celebrate Christmas, and God hates it. Yes, 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 so-called black man, woman, and child. God does not want you to celebrate Christmas. Jesus Christ never celebrated his own birth. None of his apostles celebrated his birth. None of his disciples celebrated his birth. But the so-called black man that called himself a Christian, the black woman that called herself a Christian, don't do anything that Jesus Christ did when he was walking the earth. Read that for me. Start at verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Uh huh. Keep not thou silence, O God. You know how the Most High God is not going to keep silent? He's going to send the real prophets of the Most High God into the hoods. He's going to send us into the hoods. You know why we in the hoods? Because all of our people that look just like us, that don't have an image of themselves on their own walls. This is where they live. This is why we're here. Because when we ask your son, what does Jesus Christ look like? He's not too sure. He's been told, but he hasn't been shown. He doesn't walk into his bedroom and look at the image of the greatest man that ever walked to the face of this earth and see an image of his father and see an image of his grandfather. Because that's what happens. When you realize Jesus Christ is a black man, then I see Christ in you. Then I see Christ in you. Then I see Christ's mother in you. I see Christ's sister in you, my sister. Keep reading. Keep not those silence, oh God. And we're never going to keep silent. Read. Hold not thy peace uh -huh. and be not still, oh God. Read. For no, thy enemies make it to move. Hey, my sister, my sister, I want you to pay close attention. Pay close attention. There's a key word that I want y'all to hear. Read that from the top again. Just that verse. For lo, thy enemies. The Bible says it's speaking on, on behalf of the Most High God. King David says, thine enemies. Speaking to the Most High God, my sister. Who are God's enemies? Who? Who are God's enemies? The so-called white man? Say it loud. Who's God's enemy? Who's God's enemy? Them. There you go right there. There you go. So God's, I'm going to show you, look. look the, which is also called Satan, which means adversary. 
the white man is your adversary. Always, always, he always has been. Always. When God wants you to not eat pork, what does the white man put on TV? Pork. pork. Oh my God. Right, God. right. Actually, they put it on stage. That's just like they're forcing this gay stuff. That's exactly what's happening. Nobody is even paying attention. Nobody cares about it. But y'all just want to force it upon us. Y'all just going to put it on TV. Y'all just going to put it on the stage. Y'all just going to put it everywhere. Listen close. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. And I'm going to show you why. Hey, brother, can I ask something? Like they call that. The other white meat. Yeah, that's what they call it, the other white meat. But you know what kind of meat the Bible calls it? Unclean meat that you're not supposed to eat. But you know how the white man gets you to eat it? A lot of ways on sale. It's what? It's cheap. It's cheap. And what And what condition are our people in? We are, we are poor. We are poor. We are poor. So now think about these things from the perspective of your enemy. Y'all get that bad for our bodies. For your spirit too. Uh -huh. And then we're going to get sick. Uh -huh. So now we're going to be going to the doctor. Uh -huh. Put more money in their pockets. So and when Christ comes back, what? And when and Christ then, comes back, what? If you're still eating pork. Oh, you won't receive salvation. I didn't know that. That's, like, that's how deep the rabbit hole goes, my sister. Oh, wow. That's how deep the rabbit hole goes. Let me finish reading the scripture. I, I love your excitement. I love your, your, your enthusiasm for the word of God because the Bible has never been made real for you before. It's been religion for you before. It's been a fairy tale for you before. It's been folklore. It's been everything. It's a figment of your imagination, but it has never been real. We're making it real today. Read. Yeah. Psalms 83, verse 2. Uh -huh. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, uh -huh. and they that hate thee, they that hate God. All these other nations that are not on this sign, they hate God. They know everything that God says that he likes and dislikes here, right here in the book. And you know what they do about the things that he likes? He says, uh, don't do the things that he likes. Do these other things. And what, they, and what do they do with the things that he dislikes? He says, the things that God dislikes for you to eat, we're going to make them a delicacy. They've taken evil things and made them good. They've taken good things and made them evil. Give me Isaiah. Hold that. Hold that. Give me Isaiah 5 and 20. Yes, sir. Kyle, I want a tag team, man. I ain't trying to hold it. I ain't trying to hold it. Give me Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. We can stay hot together. Come on up. Come back up. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Read. Woe unto them uh -huh. that call evil good. The Bible says woe unto them that call evil good. The Bible says that pork is evil for the so-called black man. But the white man has said that's good for you. That's the new what? What is it? The new what? The new white meat. The new white meat, so eat it like it's clean. They've taken the good things and made them evil. They've taken the evil things and made them good to destroy you, my sister. Read. Woe is to them that call evil good and good evil. You know what's good, my sister? It's good for a sister, a woman, to wear a dress. A beautiful, modest dress. But you know what they do? Teach. They gave us 106 in Park when we was growing up. That's right. They gave us rap when we was growing up. And what imagery did they put in our minds to make a, a black woman attractive? Short skin, she, she gotta be naked. She gotta be naked to be attractive. They've taken evil things and made those things good. So now the black woman has no, no self-esteem at all. The, her esteem of self is based on how many Negroes can come holler at her to come lay down with her. Teach. And you know what that promotes? STDs, single single parent households, baby mamas, baby daddies, for little boys to grow up to be a real nigga. That's the greatest that a man coming out the hood can esteem to be, a real nigga. They hate his own people. That's gonna kill one of his own brothers for another goddamn color in a crayon box. Oh, you got the red, I got the blue, I don't, I don't bang with you. I don't, but you need a pass to be out here. What's, what's going on, bro? Gang banging, drug dealing. All we got is hatred for ourselves and for one another because of this image right here, my sister. Yes, bro. That image goes way deeper than you can imagine. All the way to your subconscious, to things that you can't even consciously think of. Read. Woe unto them that call evil good uh -huh. and good evil. Read. That put darkness for light. They put darkness for light. They say eat the pork, eat the shrimp, eat the crab, eat the lobster. But God says don't eat any of it. Right. And God gave you laws for things that you're supposed to eat. The things that go in your body and the things that cover your body, God has given you laws for. 
But the white man said, to hell with the laws. Do what you want to do, sister. Dress how you, that's your body. That's your body. But guess what? You know what the Bible says? If you're, if you're married, whose body is that? Exactly. So it was never your body. It belonged to the Most High God first as a temple. That's right. Not your temple. No, I'm not, that temple. His, His temple. temple. Right. Your body never belonged to you. Right. And when you got married, it still don't belong to you. So who are you to make, who are you to have an abortion and say, "Oh, that's my body"? Teach. That's murder. That's murder. And the Bible says, "Thou shalt not kill." The white man identified and said, "Oh, okay. Well, after 18 weeks, it'll be murder. But if you do it the day after." At the, the day after he busted down, then it's all good. Take the plan B pill. You all good. That ain't murder. No, my sisters, abortion is murder, and God is not pleased with it. Keep reading. Yes, and light for darkness. Uh -huh. And put bitter for sweet. Read. And sweet for bitter. Go back to Psalms. Go back to Psalms. I just got two two scriptures. I want my brother to come back up. We're going to do this thing together. Read. Psalms 83, verse 2. Uh -huh. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. Read. And they that hate thee. They that hate, they hate God, and they hate the people that look just like them. It's only one nation on this earth that look just like God. That's you. Black. 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 The Most High God, it says he has hair like the pure wool. Uh, and feet of brass. And his son got feet like brass. Feet of brass. Feet of brass. They ain't got no hair like that. The, 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 the Bible says that the Most High God got skin that looked like a sardine stone. That's the most beautiful skin that you could ever imagine. And guess what color that is? Brown, Brown. black. That's exactly what it looks like. They hate God, they hate the people that look just like him. Read. They that hate thee uh -huh. have lifted up the head. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. The Bible says all these other nations that's not on this sign have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Who are God's people, my brother? Who's us? The so-called black man. Who's God's people? Everybody on this sign right here. But if you go to the Christian church, who's the Christian church say is God's people? The white man. They say white people. And who else? They say everybody's God's people. They say we all want people. They say color don't matter. We are all humans. Show me that in the Bible. I'm going to show you who God's people are in the Bible. Hold that. Give me Matthew 2 and 6. These Christian churches make me sick. They make me sick. They poison our people. You know why I'm sick? Because I was poisoned too. I was raised in the hood. I was raised in the projects. I was raised in the Christian church. But the Most High God brought me out of that, my sister. He brought me out of that, my brother. I ain't saved yet. I'm trying to get saved when Christ comes back. That's right. right. Teach. Ain't nobody got salvation. The Christian church teach you to come as you are, and if you walk up to the pulpit, you saved. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.